Joining me now, former United States Special Forces, my friend. He's also author of the book, Winning the Second Civil War Without Firing a, a Single Shot, Jim Hansen. Jim, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, don't talk like this often. I don't suspect to ever talk like it again. I'm a bit saddened, bummed out. What I don't know what word to put it. I'm watching us tumble down the world rankings in real time as we get bossed around by a bunch of barbarians, and I just don't have words to describe how much it bums me out, brother. Um, you and me both. Didn't we used to be the preeminent nation, the global superpower? You know, I mean, we didn't always dominate completely, but we didn't cringe and sneak away in the middle of the night while paying off our enemies, which is what we've essentially done in Afghanistan. I, it's embarrassing, and, and we're about to have to do it again, because if they want that extension past August 31st, the Taliban's going to be looking at them like this, saying, hey, uh, you need to have the Qataris fly us another plane load of cash over if you want that. Jim, can you explain, are we already bribing them? I mean, we have the head of the CIA going over there, meeting with them. I'm assuming they weren't just having tea and crumpets. What happens in these kinds of meetings? The Taliban headquarters, when they were out of power, was in Doha, Qatar. When we went ahead and paid for Bo Bergdahl, who we paid a ransom for, the Qataris were the ones who delivered the money. So they delivered $5 million in cash and five Taliban leaders, a couple of whom are back in control now. We did the same thing with this. We're doing negotiations with them in Qatar. The Qataris are, are being the ones who can give plausible deniability to Biden. He can say, oh, no, no, we didn't give him anything. Yeah, but the Qataris, when they flew the leader of the Taliban back to Kabul on a C-17, was almost certainly the back of that was filled with pallets of cash. Okay, Jim, break this down for those of us who don't understand. Qatar, what is it? Who are they? Why are they helping? What is this country? People don't even know where it is on a map. Qatar is one of the, the Gulf Arab states. They're the one that has done the most over the past decade or two to pay for and be the global sponsor of terrorism. They're the money machine behind all the bad guys. They pay the Iranians, Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, and the Taliban. They've been paying these guys for years. We try to get them to stop. But what they also do is they give us tips on the terrorists they don't like so that they can be part of our counterterrorism team and then go ahead and, and win our goodwill. So they play both sides of the fence, and we put up with it because we've got a big base there, and we need somebody to tell us what the bad guys are doing. Okay, I, I, I know it's a detail, but where do they get the money? What's their economy from, oil? Oil and now natural gas, a lot of it is. So they're big in, in natural gas. And, and they've got you know, so much money and, and their fingers in so much stuff that they've got cash to burn. And in this case, the Biden team is using them to, to do their dirty work. All right, Jim, changing gears here. Speaking of terrorists, ISIS. Everybody remembers ISIS from about a, you know, a couple years ago when they were scaring everybody, doing all these domestic terror things, tearing through the Middle East. Now they've basically fallen off the map, certainly fallen off the TV. Are they gone? Well, Trump laid a pretty good whooping on them, which is what you should do. You know, when you've got an opportunity to stack terrorists like cordwood, <clears throat> you should do that. And he did it. He chased them out of Iraq and Syria, pushed them about as far as he could, and then kind of ran into some trouble with the Russians and Turkey. And once it turned into big power fighting, um, we left a few remnants of them, but they're mostly gone. We never really laid that kind of medieval whooping, you know, Genghis Khan, Attila the Hun kind of whooping on the Taliban. And consequently, now we're paying them and they're coming back and, and they're going to be in charge in, in Afghanistan. So uh, it would have been better had we wiped them out. Jim, Iran, Russia and China, they're holding naval drills together now. Those seem like strange bedfellows. I realize they've all worked with each other in some capacity in the past. What's going on here? We are no longer the one that people want to play with. You know, it's not that we were ever going to do naval drills with Russia or China or Iran. But right now, everybody is looking at who is the big dog on the playing field. 
and it ain't us anymore. Nobody's scared of us, especially with sleepy Joe Biden just laying on his desk drooling, waiting to see what kind of ice cream he gets in the afternoon. No one's taking us seriously. The tyrants are emboldened and empowered. And now a bunch of, of countries that shouldn't, you know, and in, in, if you want an axis of evil, that's a pretty good one right there, Russia, China, and Iran. Um, we don't want them playing together, but now nobody's going to stop them. And it sure ain't going to be us. Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.